What's going on guys, Brad here. Today I'd like to show you a cool trap I like to do called the Arapuka. All right, so I've got all of my pieces already assembled for this demonstration. Basically, what you're doing is you're getting a bunch of somewhat straight sticks. Uh, the straighter the better because it's very difficult to build this if you've got curvy and bent sticks. I've cleared all the, the branches off and this is all just dead wood I've happened to find. So I've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of different sizes, you know, going from larger to smaller, all the way down to, you know, what fits inside my hand here, which is pretty small. And if you've seen pictures of this trap, it looks pretty complicated, but it's actually really easy to build. You're gonna need a little bit of cordage. This is just some raunchy twine that we happen to find out here in the woods. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I think I've got enough to use here for the trap. So, let me get it off my spindle here. All right, so you're gonna start off by taking two of your bigger pieces. And just for size reference, this is about the length of my arm. There's no rule to how, how big you need this stick to be. It's really about uh, what size bird you're going to catch. This is a bird trap. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by tying to the end of one of the large sticks. And you can notch it if you'd like to, to make it a little bit stronger. But I'm just gonna be doing a quick little clove hitch. And we'll throw a little half hitch in there. Now that's on there pretty tight. And I'm just tying right to the end here. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is tie off to this stick, and then I'm gonna do another piece of cordage from the bottom over here to the bottom over here. And then once I have that tied together, I'm gonna to be twisting that so that your cordage is gonna be making an X. And I want that to be fairly square. I wanna make sure that my other large pieces are able to fit and they're not sitting in the middle here. I want them resting on top like a log cabin. So before I tie off to the top of this stick, I do want to go diagonally and kind of get a get a bit of a measurement right here. I want to make sure that that's going to fit. And that looks pretty good like that. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this off over here. This cordage is a mess. But I'm saving myself from using my own. doing a clove hitch and then a little half hitch. You can tie any knot you want really, as long as it holds. All right, so I've got that tied out there. And now that that's tied, I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut on my cordage so I can use the rest down below. All right, looks like I'm gonna have just enough for this trap. I'm cutting it close here, but this should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and tie off to the end here. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. That's my frame now. So basically a big square. Now, like I said before, I'm gonna be twisting this just like that so that I've got an X in the middle. So now I'm laying that down. I wanna make sure that these are still parallel. Now I'm gonna take the next two larger sticks that I have. I'm gonna lift up in the middle of the X here. I'm gonna put them in and now push them to the end. So now, you can see I've got four sticks in here, and now I'm gonna be doing this in the opposite direction, which would be through the front here. So I'm gonna take my next size of sticks, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up the middle just like before, and I'm gonna go from this direction now and I'm gonna pull them out and push them up to the end. And now this is starting to feel a little bit structured now. And hopefully you can understand kind of the concept of, of this weaving. Very repetitive, you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And 
and I don't think I'm gonna be using all the sticks here. I, I got I gathered a little bit extra. And you gotta keep going down to the ones you've already fed in and make sure that they're not sliding in on you. You wanna keep pulling it out and keep that line taut. wrong direction there and sometimes if it's hard to push over you can kind of just grab that stick and roll it it's tough with this cordage though because it's twine but I think it should work fine These are getting kind of tough to get in now, which is good. Getting close to the top. That's feeling really tight, actually. I'm gonna get my last few in here. Let's see if we can get this thicker one in. Oh no. Disaster. Yeah, I think what happened there is some of my sticks down below were pushing in and I need to remember to keep pushing them out. This is very fragile, but once once it's all pushed together, it's actually very strong. I've made these and I've been able to stand on them before. Do I continue? This twine is broken. I think uh, the best option now is to switch to a paracord or bank line. All right, so I ended up putting bank line in here. That twine broke on me. I guess that's to be expected, just picking up random quarters off the ground. But right now I'm using bank line. Um, this is holding up a lot better. I've only ever really used paracord on this stuff because that's what I generally have the most of. But the bank line seems to be working fine. It doesn't have uh, the give that uh, paracord has. Paracord tends to stretch a little bit. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. But, you know, the bank line's holding up really well. This is, uh, this is starting to take its final form here. Actually, this is very tight. This might be my last piece of wood here. All right. Actually, very tight. Let me make sure this is all snugged up. All right, so um, another thing you can do uh, if you wanted to, I'm not going to do it just because this seems very tight is you can get an extra piece of cordage and you can kind of go around the sides here and lash these up to get them nice and tight, you know, just like this. And I've done that before, but if you have a really, really tight trap and your, your pieces of wood are really straight, you don't really need to do that because this will hold up just fine by itself. Um, you can see some of these gaps are a little bit bigger. Um, you're not gonna be catching finch in here. Um, you know, maybe a, a dove, or, uh, or something like that, or a pigeon. You can make the traps bigger, you can make them smaller. This is generally the size I, I use. Um, I don't really use them too often, I just make them for fun. If you find that the gaps um, in your trap are a little bit bigger um, than the game you're trying to catch, you can go ahead and weave you know, some foliage in there. I've seen people pack um, like clay or mud around the outsides. It'll also give it a little bit more weight. It'll be harder for the animal to lift it, not that birds have arms and they can't really get out but uh you know these are generally really effective traps uh, i've seen a lot of people on youtube catching birds with them and uh they're fun to make
All right, so the way that you would set this is very similar to the way you would do a deadfall, um, whichever trigger system you prefer, really. You can do a barber chair style trigger or a Paiute. And what's nice about a live trap like this, especially a cage trap, is you don't have to worry about, you know, if you have your, your trigger system here and it gets tripped and your parts shoot into your trap, it's not gonna really mess up uh, what you're trying to do there because with a deadfall, that could leave gap, you know, and your mouse or whatever you're catching could survive because of that gap. But in here, it's not gonna really make a difference. So you don't have to get super technical with your trigger as long as it's effective. Thanks guys for watching. This is just a quick look at the Arapuka bird trap. I'm Brad with American Wilderness, and I'll see you in the next video.